Caitlin Deaver stars in Booksmart, where she does her best to break out of her character as smart and responsible Eve Baxter by playing somebody who is smart and responsible, except with a terrible mouth. It's Olivia Wilde's feature-length directorial debut. So how does she do with this high school dramedy? So it's the day before graduation and the two top students in the school who happen to be best friends realize that they have missed out on all kinds of parties and really just high school social life because they focused so much on their schoolwork in order to get into the top schools. Then they realize though that their friends, well, their acquaintance, their classmates who did party, who did have a lot of high school experiences also got into those exact same top schools. So they set out on the night before graduation to find an epic party so that they can kind of cram all of these experiences into one night before they graduate. All of the characters seem to be kind of caricatures of real life. I mean, they are all just taken kind of to the extreme and really exaggerated. I mean, like the jock is all jock. The skater is kind of just dumb and brainless and a little bit clueless. The, the stoner, well, they're just stoned out of their minds. And even the gay guys are just wildly and overly flamboyant. And just, it was a little off-putting to see all of these characters who are just such extremes of anything based in reality. I mean, yes, you do have all of these people and all of those as examples in real life, but typically you don't have all of them to such a degree in one small little microcosm. So to see them all put into that situation, it did feel just a little bit forced, like it didn't feel or ring true. So along with Caitlin Deaver, we have Beanie Feldstein, and together they're kind of good. I mean, they, they for the most part, bring out the best in each other. I mean, they really work hard as best friends to complement each other, to lift each other up, and I appreciated that a lot. But on the other hand, they're also super crude together. And that began to really grate on me. Just it, it became wildly unnecessary and like that they were just trying to be crude for crude's sake. Now I'm not a prude or even disillusioned that there aren't crude people out there and that that's not how real life is. However, in this scenario, it felt forced. It felt almost like that's how it should be, that everybody should be crude or that they should be acting like this versus it kind of being in the minority. I mean, I volunteer with middle schoolers and high schoolers, and for the most part, they don't act this way. I mean, sure, there are some that do, and, and we all have our periods of you know acting out or whatever, but this, in this instance, in the film, it just, it, it felt like it was trying to tell us, no, 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 this is how you're supposed to be, versus, hey, that's kind of an anomaly or a little blip on the screen. The pace of the film is, is pretty good. I mean, it moves along and it keeps the story going for the most part, right up until about the beginning of the third act. And then it just kind of steps on the brakes for a minute and it slows way down. And then after that, it, it picks back up again. So, you know, it had a minor pacing issue there just because you start to feel the time just a tiny bit. But for the most part throughout the film, you don't notice the time moving along. I like some of the interactions between the characters. And I also really like that some of the assumptions that are placed on the characters at the beginning of the film or that we are told to have assumptions as an audience, they turn out to be wrong. And then also that we see growth in some of the characters. And I really like that and I really appreciate that fact because had the characters all stayed flat throughout the entire thing, then it's just kind of pointless. I mean, there's no reason to watch because it's just, you're just watching a day in the life of somebody where they don't learn anything. And mm, to me, that's just kind of a waste of time. But they thankfully didn't do that with all of the characters. I mean, you actually saw growth, you saw change, you saw repentance or remorse or just, you know, them working on relationships and that was awesome. There are some genuinely funny moments in the film and some parts where I laughed out loud but I think they're kind of few and far between. That most of the time when there was humor, sometimes it felt forced or it just wasn't funny. While you can probably get a little bit of enjoyment from Booksmart, I don't think it's memorable and it's certainly not that funny. And really, I don't think it's worth the time or the money, certainly, to rush right out and just drop all of your cash on it in the theater. 
check it out on Netflix, wait for it for Redbox, absolutely, because then you're not out a ton of cash. I mean, there are some redeeming points in the movie, but overall, it was just kind of there. There's no violence, but there is sex, nudity, and a ton of profanity. I give Booksmart two and a half out of five couches. What is a really good high school comedy or drama that I should check out? I'd love to know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.